Hey, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at joanne.com. This is week number one of our stitch along. We're gonna get started this week to be able to really kind of put the pieces together and the foundation of our particular blanket together. We're gonna work on a basic granny square for this week. You're gonna crochet the amount that you need and then join me next week as we continue our stitch along together. So let's get started. This is the stitch along and you can see on page number one that there's three versions, one, two, and three, and they have the contrasting, which is the colors A, B, C, and D. If you decide to change the order of any of that or even substitute colors, you will change the yarn ball quantities. You will notice that the blanket is approximately 45 inches by 55 inches and it's made up of 63 granny squares. So today we're gonna do 22 of this style here. Now just because it's all in the blue and it's saying to do all one color, you can change out your colors if you want. Again, if you change colors, it will change the yarn ball quantity. So just be very cautious of that. So on page number two is the instructions. So on page number two is the set of instructions. You'll see that there is five rounds in order to make this. So it's using A, the first color, and you're gonna make 22 of these. So there's five rounds that you see. So what we have here is a stitching key diagram to show you what exactly is happening in this. So what we have here is that you'll notice that the slip stitching is coming up here. Let's talk about that and zoom in on that. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start ourselves in chain two and then we're gonna work our way in the second chain from the hook and we're gonna put in eight of these single crochets and then we're gonna slip stitch. We're then gonna chain out three and then put a double crochet in the same one and then each one of these single crochets is gonna have two. So you wanna keep an eye on your number. So you have eight and then you'll have 16 and then we then convert into a corner um, section just like you see and then we get bigger. So really, there really is no hard part to this. The place that you wanna keep an eye on the most is number three to make sure that you are doing your corners just right. You'll notice that the corners are over two different stitches, not just one. So you wanna keep an eye on that. And other than that, it's really not a hard one at all. So without further ado, let's grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook, grab your yarn color of choice, and let's begin. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot in our hand and we are going to insert our hook in. So it's only five rounds that we need to do today so you'll find that it will go pretty quickly per square and you need a total of 22 of them. So you need to chain two. So one and two. Now insert into the beginning chain. So second chain from the hook which is this first one and I want you to single crochet a total of eight times. So, so one, two, three, four. Noticing that I'm going up over top of the, of the straggler so it keeps underneath. So I'm at four so far. So five, six, seven, and eight. So to verify that you have eight, just count back from behind the hook. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the eighth one is where you want to stick your crochet hook to form the circle. So stick it right in and then pull it through and through and that completes off round number one. Let's move along to round number two. So let's move along to round number two. You're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and in the same one that you did the join, I want you to double crochet. So that will be a total of two coming out of the same stitch. So each one of these stitches, there's a total of eight all together. So this is one of them. So this is another one. So there's gonna be two double crochets in each stitch going all the way around. So there will be eight groups of two and a total of 16 double crochets by the time you come around. Please do that all the way around for round number two. So I'm in my last stitch. So there's eight groups of two. Now when you're new to crochet, you always accidentally think that the next one here is a stitch that's not, see how it's leaning into this one? That's part of that. So don't go into that one because then I'll give you the wrong count. So you can see that there's eight groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So once you have that done, just slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and pull through and through and then that closes off that circle. Let's move along now to round number three. Let's begin round number three. We're gonna start off in the corner. So we're gonna chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. And that is your first treble. That counts as a treble. So I want you to treble into the same one again. So to treble you wrap the hook twice and then go into the exact same stitch for that one. And insert in, pull through, pull through two, two, and two back to the top. So the next two in a row will be one double crochet. 
just one and then the next one. So now we're gonna start our first our first full corner. So this is a half a corner that we're, we're finished when we get back around. So the next one is gonna be two trebles into the same stitch. Okay. And when you get that done, you need to chain two so that you can physically turn one and two and go to your very next stitch and put two trebles in. So the corners are made up of two stitches, not just everything going into one for this particular round. So the repeat pattern for this one for round number three is that there's gonna be two double crochets in a row and then you are going to start another corner. So the first side of it will be two trebles into the first stitch and do you remember what to do to turn? You're gonna chain two and then jump to your next stitch and finish off your corner. So I want you to repeat what you just learned all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll complete this one off. This is round number three. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm just on my last side. Okay, so I finished off my corner and I'm on my last side. So there's two double crochets in a row and the very last stitch is the other half of this first corner that we started with. So there's gonna be two trebles there. So one and two into the same one. And then you're going to chain two and slip stitch it to the top of the first chain four to finish round number three off. Just like that. So you'll notice that it's gonna kind of buckle a little bit. Don't worry about it. It will kind of settle down as it gets bigger. Let's move along now to round number four. So in round number four we're going to begin and you're gonna chain three and there's gonna be one double crochet in each of these stitches then going to the corner. So the next one is right here. So we start in your next stitch. Okay, so you see how this chain three equal this stitch here and you wanna uh, just put in one double crochet in each except for the corners. You're gonna do the same thing in each of your corners and I'll be there in just a moment. It's gonna be in the corner, two double crochet, one and two followed by a chain two to turn the corner and then in the same space I want you to put in two more double crochet. Okay, so it's just one double crochet in each and then in the corners two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Please do that all the way around for round number four and meet me back here and I'll finish it off with you. So when you get all the way around you have your final corner to go into. It hasn't been started yet so you gotta do the whole thing. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the same one and once you get that complete that you're done. So you're just gonna slip stitch then to the top of the first chain three and finish off round number four. So let's begin round number five, the final one and then that's it for these squares and you've gotta make 22 of these. So you're gonna chain up three to begin and then just one double crochet in each of the double crochets that go around and in the corners again you already know what to do. It's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So essentially you're just doing what you already know for that you did in round number four. So just do that all the way around, one double crochet in each and in the corners two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up to the end of round number five and I have to turn a corner completely because I started partially the way in. So I gotta do the corner so it's two double crochet, chain two and two double crochet into that same corner and then you need to finish off the other two stitches that are sitting there. Do you see them? So you're just gonna put one double crochet in each of those and then you're just going to join it with a slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. Now because this is at the very end I'm recommending for you to finish this off uh, completely at the end. So just trim your yarn and just grab a tapestry needle. So you need to make 22 of these. Your whole afghan is made up of several different uh, granny squares. So what we want to do is we wanna take care of the loose ends now. We're gonna do a join as you go uh, at the end of this when we got all our squares done. So just using your tapestry needle just drag it up underneath the stitch work and if you go back and forth a total of three times you can hide it in quite nicely. So you go once and twice. Just stay underneath the stitch work. and just go back a third time and that's it. So once you uh, woven that in you're good to go. Just trim your work 
And so just make a total of 22 of these and then join me back next week as we continue our stitch along together. Thank you so much for joining me this week. We'll see you next week as we continue our stitch along together with our friends over at Joanne.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. This is week number two of our stitch along. We're going to continue and we're going to step a little bit higher this time with our granny squares this week. If you didn't get your homework done from last week, don't worry about it too much. Just follow today's video and then you can get caught up at a later time. So without further ado, let's go down to the studio. Let's get started right now. Welcome to week number two of our stitch along and this time we are going to provide a three dimensional flower that is in the middle of the square. So we're gonna start off with this, use a different color for the middle just to make it pop even more and you can notice that there is two colors being used. So we have a color B and we also have color C. Of course if you're gonna change colors then it will change the yarn ball quantity but again I want you to make it customized for you. Again there is five rounds. Let's look at page number two. On page number two, there's a crochet diagram showing you the five rounds. Again, the slip stitching is done on this section here. You can move it over if you wish. I'm gonna leave that in your capable hands. If you've done number one with me, you'll know how exactly to do it with the half double crochet join if you would like to keep it on the edge. So what we have today is that we're going to start off and we're gonna go in a round circle again. Uh, eight is your magic number once again and then we're gonna do our popcorn in order to get that to work. And I'll show you how to do that and then we're gonna then move up convert ourselves to a square and then rounds number four and five we're just gonna get bigger. So let's grab a yarn and a five millimeter size H crochet hook and let's begin. You need to make a total of 20 of these. So let's move along to week number two. So what we have here is we had a flat section here in week number one and then we had five rounds. Week number two we also have five rounds but the difference is is that round number two has these raised popcorn and the rest of it is all, all the same. So the first round and three, four and five are exactly identical. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna change our way that we're doing here. Use a different color, make it pop off of your afghan. You'll notice it's nice and three dimensional. On the back side it's flat. So without further ado, let's grab our crochet hook. So grab a color of the flower that you would like to do and let's begin round number one. So let's start off. So it starts off like week number one and we are going to start with a slip knot on the hook and chain two. So one and two. And second chain from the hook which is the beginning chain, I want you to put in eight single crochets. So let's count those together. So we have one, two, three and four. So we're halfway around. Now use this straggler, just put it up on top of it so it gets stuck underneath and continue along. So we got five, six, seven and eight. Now I want you to insert the hook in the eighth one away. So just count back. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight is right there. As an experienced crocheter, I can see that immediately but if you ever have to question that, that's how you do it. So just slip stitch then in the eighth one away and that will complete off your first circle that we have. Let's move along to round number two. So in round number two, it's very much like the first week that we had. We have to put two stitches into each stitch in order to have the growth. So this time though, we're gonna change up the story a little bit. So we're gonna chain up three which counts as your first double crochet and in the same stitch I want you to do a popcorn and the popcorn is consisting of four double crochets into the same stitch. So right where it's joining I want you to put in four double crochets and then I'll explain further. So let's just count those out. So we have one, two, three and four. And once you have four you now do a popcorn. To do a popcorn you're gonna take this off the hook and go to the fourth one back. So just one, two, three, four and insert in the top of the fourth one and put the loop back on and pull it through and chain one to lock it. So now you're gonna go to the next stitch that's available to you. So you're gonna have a total of eight of these going all the way around. So the next one we're gonna start off with one double crochet. Okay, so that's in between each of the popcorns and then you're gonna do another popcorn. So the popcorn consists of four double crochets. So we have one, two, three and four. Now I want you, now that we got our four, go 
back to the fourth one. So one, two, three, four and grab it and pull it through and chain one to lock. So here's what I would do if I were you and you were me. Instead of just saying one double crochet into the next one just say that you're doing five and it just it's just easier to think about. So you're just gonna do five. So one, two, three, four and five. Then when you do your popcorn only count to the fourth one back. So release it. So one, two, three and four. So it's just a matter of perspective, right? So pull through, chain one to lock and then move to your next one. So please do that same thing going all the way around. You should have eight of these popping out at the end. So I'm coming into my last stitch here and I'm putting in five double crochets in a row. So one, sorry, into the same one and then that's just the way that I'm looking at it from perspective and then just count back to the fourth one. So one, two, three, four, insert in and chain one to lock and then you immediately to finish off you then just go to the top of the first chain three and just slip stitch pull through and through. So now this color is completely done. So just get rid of this color completely weave in your ends beautifully and then we're going to do uh, three, four and five together. So just weave in your ends just pull through and you can actually just weave them in and out of the stitch work because it'll get stuck under the next stitches ahead. So please do that all the way around. So let's begin by going into a top of any of the double crochets or the chain three. It depends up to you. Just make sure you don't choose a, a popcorn stitch and just create a slip knot to begin and just go in the top of it of a double crochet. So just ignore the, the popcorn for now and just slip stitch it to pull it through to, to join it. So now I need you to chain a total of four. So that's your first treble. So one, two, three and four and in the same one you just did that join put another treble. So wrap the hook twice and going in. So like on week number one the next two stitches in a row are each gonna be a double crochet. So the next one just happens to be a popcorn. So go in the top of the popcorn put down the straggler so that it's gonna get stuck underneath so you don't have to worry about sewing that in later. So you have one double crochet. The next one is in the chain is in the double crochet and now we're going to begin the next corner. So the next corner is in the top of the next popcorn. So we're gonna treble first. So go into the top of that popcorn and place in a treble. I'm just gonna get rid of that straggler just as the last time I'm bearing it going across. Just pull it tight and then treble again into the same stitch. Chain two and then come into your next stitch which is a uh, double crochet and two trebles into that one. So really the difference of week number one and, and two is really right here but the difference is, is that you just gotta look for the, the stitch count not necessarily what it is. So the next one is in the top of the popcorn so that'll be a double crochet and then the next one is in the top of the double crochet and then a new corner starts. So we're gonna start in the top of the popcorn, place in two trebles and then you're going to chain two and then two trebles into the next stitch and then continue. So please do that all the way around. It's pretty easy generally and uh, I think that you'll enjoy it too. So please do this for round number three. So let's just come around on round number three. So I've just done two double crochets in a row. So the top one here is gonna be in a popcorn and that makes sense because we started off in a chain three or a double crochet that was by itself. So that makes sense that the last stitch is in a popcorn. So two trebles and then just chain two and then just join it to the top of the chain four that you started with and that will complete that going around. It'll look like it's buckling but it's actually gonna be fine. So just stick with it and let's begin round number four. So round number four and five is each the same. So you're just gonna chain up three to begin. You're not in a corner so you'll do the corner last uh, in round number four and then in round number five you'll do the corner plus two more. So you're just gonna go and treat it. So each stitch is going to be a double crochet except for the corners. The corners are like week number one and they will be two double crochet followed by a chain two and two double crochet into the same space. 
like that. So then just one double crochet in each up into the next corner and then in the next corner again two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So please do that all the way around for round number four. I'll see you at the end of this round and then we'll kick off round number five and then that'll be it for these squares. So I'm coming up to the final corner. I got two double crochets in there for so far and then I'm just chaining two, two double crochet and then that's it for round number four. So you're just going to join it to the top of the first chain three and then that's it. So round number five is exactly what you just learned. So you're just gonna chain up three and then it's gonna be one double crochet in each going around except for the corners. So it'll be two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So I want you to complete round number five and I'll see you at the end of this round to make sure that you're ending properly and I'll see you there in a moment. So when you come to the all the way around you're just gonna hit the corner. So you gotta complete it all the way. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Now because you're bigger than you were in round number four is that you'll have two stitches left and you'll just put in one double crochet in each. And then that's it. So because this is it for the square just fast or slip stitch it to the top of the chain three and let's get rid of this yarn. So you'll notice that it's kind of buckling up a little bit. Once it's sewn or through join as you go technique when we go to join them you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. So just cut your yarn and just pull the yarn through and just throw it through a tapestry needle. And if you go back and forth like I showed you in week number one is that you can hide it in pretty good. So just going up underneath the stitch work and just going in about an inch across. So just go once and then back in the other direction twice and three times is a charm. So the project it will never follow um, on you when you go back and forth three times and then that's it. So I need you to get a total of 20 of these done and uh, you can have different colors if you wish. It will change the yarn quantities uh, uh, for color wise but it's kind of a neat idea and get rid of any loose ends that you have and then we'll see you again week number three as we continue our mystery together. So that's it for now. Your homework is now ready for you to be able to play with. We'll see you next week. We'll continue with our stitch along in week number three. We'll see you again real soon and bye bye to my friends over at joanne.com. Hey, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at joanne.com. This is week number three of our stitch along with our friends over at joanne.com. So today we're going to move up and we're going to do the highest level of crochet texture granny square today to be able to really finalize all your squares because next week we're going to start putting it together. So without further ado, let's go down to the studio. Let's get started right now. Today we're moving on to week number three of making these beautiful granny squares that have the pop out flower. So before what we were doing is that we were doing something flat and now something with a bit of pop in week number two and then finally week number three we're really gonna go for the pop. So today we need to make 20 of these and let's turn this over and look at the diagram next. So the diagram is on page number two and you can see that you can just follow it along. Now you're gonna see seeing red arrows and red arrows are pointing to where you need to go. So you're going to notice that there is like little half moon shapes and if you look at the side here you'll be able to tell what those are as we're working our way across. So this is gonna be three dimensional. It's gonna make the flower just pop right out and you are going to probably have a lot of fun at the same time. So without further ado let's grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook and continue along with your Karen one pound. If you're not sure what the colors are you can just refer to week number one and you can determine that from there. So let's begin. We're going to start off with a slip knot and we are going to chain a total of four and that will count as a double crochet. So let's just count that. So one, two, three and four. As soon as you have that done go to the first chain. So count back all the way to the fourth and I want you to place in 11 double crochets for chain from the hook. And we're gonna count those out together. So we have one, two, three and four. Just go right up over top of that straggler. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and finally number eleven. 
So the chaining of three that we started with, the chaining of four, sorry, is going to count as a double crochet. So let's just count all the way around. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve. So the chaining of four plus the other eleven gives you a total of twelve. And once you're satisfied with that, just insert the hook into the top of the first chain and just pull it through and through as a slip stitch. And now get rid of the straggler end and let's carry on to round number two. So as we work on number two, we need to concentrate on the front loops. So we're going to be using the back loops later when we come up to round number three. But for now, we're just gonna use the front. So we're going to chain up a total of three, just like you see. And in the next one in the front loop only, you're gonna put a double crochet and then a slip stitch. And the next one is a double crochet. And then the next one is a double crochet and slip stitch. And this is all happening in the front loops. So you see every other one is either a double crochet or it's a double crochet slip stitch. And you'll do that all the way around for round number two. So let's begin round number two. You're gonna chain three. And in the next front loop, you're going to put in a double crochet only. So if you're new to crochet, there's always two strands that make up a stitch. If you come into the very first one, it's the front loop. If you come into the next one, it's the back loop. So it's whatever one is closest to you. So in the front loop only, I want you to double crochet first. And then in the same front loop, I want you to slip stitch. So just pull through and through. And that'll cause it to lift. So we're going to now move to the next front loop and it will be just a double crochet by itself. And then the next one is what we just did. So we're going to in the front loop just double crochet and then slip stitch into the same one. So please do that all the way around for round number two. So I'm coming all the way around. The last one will be a double crochet and then a slip stitch in order to keep the right count. And instead of joining it to the top of the chain three as you normally would, you're going to just slip stitch it to the back loop of where this chain is originating out of. And that's where we're going to go. And so then that gets us where we need to go then for round number three. Let's begin round number three. In round number three, nice simple round, you're going to chain three and then in the same back loop, you're going to put in a double, another double crochet. So we just wanna flip these forward and just use the back loop of where they're coming out of. So we're just looking for it here, so it's there and you're going to place in two double crochets in the back loop. So there will be 12 back loops all the way around if it helps you to know that number. So you, once you get that two into the next one, just flip it over and then go into the next one and there will be two double crochets into that one too. So just uh, simply apply two double crochets in each one of the, the back loops and just flip that one forward, these that you see there in order to get access to it if you can't see it. When you get all the way back around, you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. And now we're gonna begin the next layer of work. So to do this next layer is that we are just gonna simply just chain a total of three. So one, two, and three. So in the front loop only, and, and then starting in the next one, so right there, we want to place in uh, a V-stitch kind of formation. So it's gonna be a treble. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and then you're gonna go into that stitch and finish it and then chain one and treble into it again. Then you're gonna move along. So in the next front loop only, you're going to place a double crochet followed by a slip stitch into the same one. Okay, so let's go through that again. So the very next one that we have is that it's going to be a double crochet in the front loop and this one be, will be by itself in the next one, we're going to do a treble. So this is, is gonna help us get back to a square in the future. So we're gonna do a treble into it first. Chain one and treble into it again. And then going into the next one that is right after, you're just going to double crochet and then slip stitch. And that slip stitching is what pulls it in to form that, that lip. Okay, so let's review one more time. So the next one is going to be a double crochet by itself. The next one is you're gonna be your treble work. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and do your treble. Chain one, treble again. And then going into the next one, you're gonna start with the double and then slip stitch. And I want you to repeat that all the way around to do that layer. 
So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just doing the, the repeat stitch work. There's no surprises here. So the, this will be the last time for this particular color. I'm just finishing off with a treble. Okay and then we're just gonna continue along then here. So the, this was a chain three which counts as a double crochet. So the very last stitch in the front loop only would just be a double crochet. And then slip stitch to bring it back in and then you're just going to insert into um, what I would do is insert into the bottom section of the chain three and then finish that off and then that'll keep it looking consistent. So you're gonna be using the back loops of what we just have and you'll see it more this uh, layer here and we're gonna continue then to a different color then for this project. We're now gonna move on to round number five and we're going to join at the here and do a chaining of four. The next one will be treble, two doubles, treble and then a corner. So the corner is you just gotta watch what you're doing as far as like going in the back loops of this already existing and what this will do is it'll put the granny square somewhat behind it so that it will cover in any of these spaces. So let's begin round number five. So let's begin round number five. We're just gonna start off with a slip knot and we're going to go into the back loop only. So just turning it over and just get the back loop of what this was here. Okay, so let's just turn it over and you can go right in and just come off to the side a little bit. So don't go right into the middle of a petal. So just come off to the side and I'm just going to join it with a slip stitch and then chaining four. So there's a slip. So let's chain four. So one, two, three and four. So in the next back loop only which you can see here, do you see that? Is going to be a treble. So everything is getting something. So don't be skipping over anything at this particular point. So okay, so now the next one is going to be two doubles in a row. So the next two in a row will each be a double crochet. So go right up over top of that straggler and catch that into position so you don't have to worry about it later. The longer you put it in there, the, the chance there will not fall out. Okay, so now you got two in a row. Now you're going to go to the next one and it will be a treble and then the next two that we're going to do, that's gonna be your first corner. So the corners will be starting off with the treble in the next one followed by chain two and then the next one will be a treble again. So that is your complete corner. So let's just go through the repeat pattern of going across. So the next one will be a treble by itself. The next two will each be a double crochet. And then finally you're going to have one treble by itself. And then you're gonna hit another corner. So the next, over the next two you'll be doing the corner. So do a treble into the first one followed by chain two and treble into the very next one after that and there is another corner. So what I want you to do is repeat that around and you will see this will fill in and then cause this to jump up just how you see. When you finally come back around you have to do that final corner. So you're just going to treble into your very last one that you have and then chain two and then you are going to join it then to the top of the first chain four. So you technically should have six stitches between each of the corners. See how there's six there? So you'll see that each and every time. So keep this yarn color on. You'll notice that it's gonna kinda buckle up on you. We need to settle it down then in round number six and let's get going. So let's begin round number six. I'm gonna chain up three, counts as a double crochet and we're gonna double crochet all the way around except for the corners we're gonna add in a little bit of extra stuff. So each one of these stitches, so this one counts as this one so we have not done the corner yet and we're just gonna work our way and double crochet ourselves to the next corner which is the chain two space. And in the chain two spaces we're gonna apply two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and for those familiar with granny squares you know that's almost a standard thing. So in the space here we're going to put in two double crochets first, one and two followed by chain two and then back into it again with two more. So we're immediately going to jump and we're gonna fill in these six that you have. So we start with the first one and you can count them if you wish. I don't, I'm just looking at it. And when I get to the corner I know what to do. I have two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. 
and that's exactly what's happening here. So this is gonna be the last time I use this color and we're gonna do one more color for the border and then carry on. So do this idea all the way around for round number six. So as you come all the way around you still have your final corner so make sure that you fill that in with two double crochets first followed by chain two and two double crochets once again. So now that's it for this color. We're just gonna introduce a third color here and just insert it into the top of the first chain three, pull it close and then let's get rid of this color then. You'll notice that it's gonna still kind of buckling. Um, it's going to settle down. I have, you have to um, just put faith in it and once it's attached to its neighbor also it's gonna really make this pop and that's the whole point. Let's begin round number seven for the final. So let's begin the final round here. I'm just adding yellow and I was watching Bob Ross this morning and it was like happy little accidents. There's no mistakes. It's happy little accidents because you always make do with the colors that you have. So let's begin. We're going to come to the top of the first chain three and we're going to insert in and attach with a slip stitch and then begin chain three. One, two, three. So each one of these existing stitches are each going to be a double crochet. So you just have to just double crochet around and then in the corner what do you think it's gonna be? If you thought two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, you're either a pattern reader or you already kind of looked ahead to be able to kind of get an idea of where we're gonna go. So you need to make a total of 20 of these squares in order for you to complete this particular uh, afghan and you can have really a lot of fun with the color. I want you to have fun with the color and it's really quite awesome. So in the corners it's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and then we're gonna continue then around and then that's it for today and next week what we're going to start is that we're going to begin doing the um, attach as you go. So the next round around these we're going to be attaching to the neighbor and as you build on to each other you're going to see that there's a diagram on how it goes together but of course you can use your own creativity and come up with the own designs that make sense for your own creativity. So that's it for now and I will see you at the end of this round and We'll meet you there in just a moment. So as we come all the way around the last corner needs to be filled in yet. It's two double crochet followed by two, uh, chain two and then two double crochet. But remember we never started off in the corner so we just have to finish the final two stitches that are left. And then that's it for this color. So I need you to make, uh, that's it for this particular square today. So I need you to make a total of 20 of these and when we come back next week I'm going to show you how to attach these together and it's a really kind of neat uh, idea. Um, it's something that I haven't really done or thought about and this is uh, like I've done join as you go but I haven't done it in the way that they're suggesting. So of course for me I'm learning something new at the same time which I love. So let's begin and we'll see you again next week as we continue your journey for the stitch along with our friends over at Joanne. Thanks so much for joining me today. We'll get all this done and next week we're gonna start putting our afghan together with the join as you go technique. See you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So with my friends over at joanne.com. This week we're gonna put it together. Hopefully you got all your squares done. If not, just head back into the other videos and the pattern and be able to get those done because we're now going to join it as you go for your particular afghan today. So without further ado, let's head on down to the studio. I'll show you how easy it is to do. Today we're going to work on week number four and we're gonna be doing the attaching today. And you can see the map on how it wants you to attach but of course I want you to use your own creativity. Now if you did uh, follow the suggestions of the numbers of counting, the way that it's uh, done here you will see that it will work out that way as well. So if you need to change the way it looks you might just have to make some extra squares or subtract some that you've made. So that's completely your choice. You are the creative artist. I want you to explore that. So when we're going to be attaching these together what you're going to notice is that we're just gonna be attaching and joining uh, with uh, single crochets reaching across and just going every other one in order to do it. Now the interesting thing about this is that when there is no attaching so if it's on the edge of the blanket you're going to notice that there is this um, attaching here does not go all the way around. It only goes across the, the directions that you wanna go. So what I would strongly suggest to you is that it's showing you the map here how to do it but once you get this done you just continue to jump. So you attach here and then you jump to the next one and you don't have to uh, fasten off when you go to do that. So let's work on doing this together. 
So I'm zooming in onto the diagram that you see. We're gonna start off in the corner and then we're going to single crochet and chain one, single crochet to the next corner. And then we're gonna come back into this one that we started with and go to the second one over, single crochet. And then we're gonna come to the next one and we're gonna go to the second one over and single crochet. And then we're going to jump over, skip one, single crochet and then come back and skip one and doing that. And this is going to attach it together as you go. When you get to this point here, you're just gonna simply just look here and just continue to join it where it's suggesting and then just continue to use this process. So regardless if you're crocheting and joining it in this direction or this direction, you're still gonna follow the same concept. Let's begin. Let's see what you, you can do today. So what we'd like to do is get your layout all set. So I told you that there's a diagram available which there is and I want you to lay it down either on a table or floor. And what we're going to do is when you lay it out you're going to join and when you lay it out you'll join to the next one above and then once these two are joined you immediately jump to the next set and so on and so on. Then what's gonna happen is that you'll notice that they're all joined so you go to the next one and join the next one in and you'll have it all done. So then you're going to turn your whole afghan sideways and this will be attached and we're gonna come across the other way in order to do it. Now when we're going to attach these we don't go all the way around these squares. We only go where it's attaching and then when we do our final border you make up for the distance that's there and we'll cover that then in the final week of round number or week number five. Without further ado, let's show you how to attach. For tutorial's sake, I'm using a vibrant color but I would almost consider it too because I think this, I've always loved this color. So I'm going to just start off with an extra long tail so that I can weave that in later. And I want to attach it to the first chain too. So make sure these are facing upward when you're going to do it and you're gonna go in and attach chain one and single crochet into that same one. And what I would do with this tail, just leave it out to the side and you can weave that in later. So you're gonna chain up one and then go to the next chain two space on the next one. And what I would do is go from the underside up and you are going to single crochet it just like that. Now if you would prefer it the other way and go from the uh, overside down, that's up to you. As long as you're consistent, it really kinda doesn't matter but it does look different so make sure that you're aware of that. So chaining up one and you're gonna come back and you're gonna go to the second one here and single crochet and how do I know that is that I have to skip one. So chain up one and go to the other one. So you have to skip one, go to the second and I'm gonna come from the bottom upward and I'm gonna single crochet. Then chain one and I'm skipping one coming down, chain one, skipping one, single crochet, chain one and so on. So what I want to do is that I wanna continue to join like this. You'll notice that it's really quite speedy. I really like these kind of joining to be honest with you. Um, anything that doesn't involve sewing I'm pretty excited about. So it doesn't take much my friends. So just continuing to join and I'll see you at the end of this and then we'll attach the next uh, set that we have just to can make sure that you've got that under your belt. So now that I've gone across I'm just gonna chain up one. I'm going into the bottom one here. This is the chain two space chain one and then get the next chain two space up here and now I'm ready for the next one. So chain one to begin and then grab your next two and start. So if you looked at the diagram you will notice that you are going to start off in the same way. So coming down into the chain two space and single crochet, chain one, come up to the next chain two space, chain one and then coming back down skipping one going to the second one over chain one and go to the second one over here and continue it along all the way across in the same manner. So when you're just joining in between them it's really no big deal. It's just you kind of restart and but you don't finish off your yarn so that you don't have any uh, yarn tails to worry about. So you're gonna go all the way across get all of your, your sections together and then you're gonna turn your afghan and then you're gonna work in this direction. But let me finish this one off first and then I'll see you there in just a moment when we turn it. Now at this point I would jump to the next set and so on and so on but when finally you're gonna hit the final edge and you chain up one and you go into the base here and then chain up one and finish in the up one and then that's it. So we're just going to just trim that off and leave an extra long yarn tail that we'll sew in later. You can sew it in now, it's up to you. 
your call. But now you'll have these all done. So you move to the next layer, continue across, move to the next layer and go across and then eventually you'll have to turn it and do all the crossing. So let's do that next. So I've now turned the afghan and so assuming that they've all had them in the same layer, I would do it very strategically. I wouldn't be messing around with trying to do too much at one time. So do all of the one side like all of these all the way up and then once you're ready then turn it and start doing this one all the way up. You're gonna start off in the same manner starting off at the bottom. It's exactly what you did. Chain one, single crochet, chain one, come up to this one and the only difference this time it, and then I'm gonna continue so just skipping one. So I'll talk to you as I'm doing it so you already know what you're doing with this one is that you just have to cross over the middle section like it's nothing there. Okay and so when you get here you'll just immediately jump over and then it will fill in all the spacing all on its own. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Continue to join as I've already shown you and I will see you when it crosses over next. So I'm coming up and I am just filling in all these here and I'm about to cross over but before I do it so I'm gonna chain up one, come into this chain two space like you did before when you were crossing this way and then chain up one, come into the next chain two space up here right directly above chain one and now you immediately start now in the next chain two space. So cross right over and start there. So single crochet, chain one, come to the one right above chain one and then start again. Second one over like you're skipping one, go into the next one and so forth and basically you've just crossed over and you can see that it just filled it in really quite nicely and really no big to do. So you're gonna continue then to layer these all up and get them all done and then that's it for this week and we'll continue our journey next week. So make sure you weave in your tails and I'll see you at the end, uh, I'll see you next week I guess for the final unwrapping things up with the beautiful border at the very end. Thanks so much for joining me. Well you got a little bit of homework now, right? So you'll see me next week as we start our final border together and good luck and we hope to see your creativity on Instagram and Facebook this week. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at joanne.com. I'm your host Mikey. This is week number five of the Stitch Along. This is the final week. We're gonna do our final border and then you could be able to gift it or you could just put it on display in your home. Without further ado, let's go down to the studio one last time. Let's show you how it's done and then I'll leave that in your capable hands. Mikey, today we're gonna do the final week number five of doing the final border for your particular concept. So it's actually really quite easy. There are only four rounds left. The first round looks like it's tapestry when you see it like this but that's actually just your variegated doing the work for you. So it's actually kind of a lazy person's way of doing tapestry but it looks so amazing and I cannot deny that. So I was actually really excited and then I saw it wasn't tapestry. I'm like oh! But I can still do tapestry if I really care about it that much but I want you to let you know, I want to let you know that that's just a variegated doing the work that looks and makes this look finished. So without further ado, we're going to then work our way across and we're gonna uh, get ourselves all the way around this and then once we do it once then it's established and there's only four rounds. The last round will be doing a reverse single crochet also known as the crab stitch. So let's begin to work around. So the first round we're going to start off in a corner and you want to make sure the blanket is facing you so the good side is facing up and you wanna go right into a corner space and the corners uh, when we go to do these is that there will be a total of five double crochet in each corner. So you're just gonna attach with a slip stitch and then to begin you're going to chain three and what I would do if I were you and you were me I would just apply um, three more double crochets into that. We'll finish the this corner when we come back around. So you want to work your way across this. Every stitch is going to get a double crochet. So nice and simple. So what do you think you're gonna do on the joining? The joining where you just have to equally space it. What I would do is that once you pass the first one and you think it looks good, do not overpack it because then you'll get a ruffle and if you speed through it then you will get a buckling. So you, when you get there you just have to equally space it and we're gonna determine that in just a few seconds here and I'm just double crocheting into each of the stitches. You can use any color that you want to do your final borders and I'm just using the pink because it kind of fills it in um, with what I've already done with the joining. So we, as you cross over you want to equally space. So I'm gonna say there's probably two double crochets in the space 
Okay, and then I'm going to come to the middle of the next space, or sorry, middle where they're joining, and then I'm gonna say there's two double crochets in the space. Now I have not practiced this and I'm gonna look at it. Does it lay flat when it's done? And it appears to be doing so. So I would do two and then one and then two. And then you're gonna continue as you, and do the same thing as you cross each one of them and then the corners will, there will be five double crochets and I'll see you that the corner next but continue all the way across and then I will uh, review once we get our back around. So I'm hitting my first corner and I'm going to apply five double crochets in there. So this is two, three, four, and five. Just like that. And what I want to do then is that I want to just come in uh, into the uh, next one and then work your way all the way across. Now I'm coming all the way back around and if you remember I told you to start with three double crochets in the first corner. So we're just gonna finish it off and just put two more in there and then we're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and then bring that to conclusion. So that's it for that color. You can fasten off. So the next two rounds are exactly identical to each other and all you just need to do is pay attention to the corners. The corners are gonna be done exactly the same way I just showed you. The difference is, is you don't, you don't can't necessarily see it that easily because you don't have a space to work with but it's, it's still easy regardless. So you know that each one of the corners has five double crochets in it. So it's the middle one of the grouping of five that will always get the five double crochets. So when you look at it, this one, it's the middle one right there. So what I want you to do is start your next color. Just choose a color that you think is right for you or just follow the pattern. It's up to you. I want you to exercise your creativity today and start off in the middle one of the grouping of five and I'm recommending also just to start off and just put three in there. So just slip stitch it, chain three, counts as one of five and so you just put in two more and you'll finish um, this corner when you come back around. Okay, so now move to the next stitch that's available to you. Just keep your straggler down on top and then you can hide that in and just go one stitch equals one double crochet. Now you don't need to worry about crossing over anything anymore because you filled that in. So you'll fill it in and then eventually you'll hit the other corner and then again the middle one of the grouping of five will have five double crochets and you continue to do that all the way around. I want you to do this for this round plus do one more round of a different color. Uh, something that you may be thinking about if you wanna use all the same color that's up to you as well. Your creativity, your choice. That's the whole point of today's stitch along with our friends at Joanne. So I'll see you at the end of getting two rounds of this done and then we'll conclude it then with the final round to bring your afghan to completion today. So let's cover your very final border. So you have the first one you started, then the second and the third and now it's the fourth and it's reverse single crochet also known as the crab stitch. So start off with an extra long yarn tail so you can use that to weave it in later. I'm recommending not starting right on the corner itself. Just come a little bit over and insert in and we're gonna do reverse single crochet with you on camera. So just yarning over pulling it through and you notice that I pulled it down. So watch how I do it again. We're doing a reverse single crochet. So just going into the stitch and pulling it through and then pull through. So that's a single crochet. So normally we advance forward but we're going to advance in the reverse. So just come into the one before and go right up over top of that straggler and just insert in, yarn over, pull through and, and over like this and then pull through the two. And it's, you see the motion so I'm coming into the one before and then just make sure this yarn strand goes over and it stays under and pull through two. You will notice that after about three stitches on how it's working and you're just gonna continue to do that. As soon as you have enough um, st stitches uh, covering over top of the straggler, just let it fall out. So we're just gonna continue then and you're gonna go all the way around. There's nothing extra special about the corners. It's just one stitch equals one reverse single crochet and you will see that it will start appearing just like that. So you're going to do the final round like this and I'll see you at the end of the round and we'll finalize and that's it for your afghan for this stitch along with our friends over at joanne.com. So I'm coming all the way around to where I had started and going in the reverse single crochet. When I first learned this stitch it was a little awkward but once I got it, I got it. So you're gonna come to the one just before uh, the very, like it's the one just before you started and that's where you're gonna finish off. Now 
watch how I do it because if you cut an extra long yarn tail and then just pull it through you'll notice that it kind of doesn't join to the original. So what I want you to do to get a nice beautiful join is that throw this through a tapestry needle and what you're going to do is that you're going to drag it underneath the existing one stay toward the back side of the project. So just go out through the back. I really need to buy another tapestry needle and pull it in and then just go back in the same direction from which you just came. So this is the second pass of three that you want to do. And when you go to pull just make sure you don't pull it and warp it. You just you want to be nice about it. Um, taut but not tight. And then just it would help actually if you put the yarn on the needle first when you're pulling through. Okay and then just pulling it through again. So it's the third time through. Again I really need to buy another tapestry notes. And there we go. So if you do a really nice job you can make it look like it belongs and uh, if I would have had a different needle it would be a lot better to my point of view. So what we have here now is the finished blanket and you can see it's actually pretty cool. Sorry I bumped the camera there for a moment and you can see that you have your nice pop offs, you have your ones that are sunken in, you have stuff without and then you got the playful color and then that's it for today. So this is it for my friends at joanne.com. I'm your host Mikey of the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining us. We please uh, enjoy your new afghan and we will have some challenge prizes available as well at uh, in the time frame that we're running this particular concept. So until next time. So that's it for the border. We hope to see your creativity. We're gonna be doing a giveaway so join us over in the crochetcrowd.com. We have some more information on how you can submit me a photo and being able to win something fun. Yeah. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at joanne.com.